All right, in this tutorial, we're going to create this standing lamp using a CV curve and uh, the surface revolve function. So I'm going to start by going to an orthographic view. And I'll just delete this. And I'm going to go to my hotbox, create curves tool, CV curve tool. I'm going to go to the uh, menu here to set this to the function I want. I'm going to choose two. That gives me kind of a curve that's controllable to get these softer contours. So once I've selected that, very important, I want to start uh, against that vertical y-axis so that I get the revolve exactly the way I want. I can adjust this afterwards, but it's just a good way to start uh, to get the jump on the shape you want. So I'll start by drawing a quarter view of what I would like this standing lamp to be eventually. And I'm going to add quite a few points because it's much easier with Maya to delete these points than to add them. It's kind of a nuisance. So um, add more than you think you may need here. And at this point, I'll start to add the reference for the light bulb that will be inside as well. And then in the next tutorial we'll convert it to a polygon which allows us to separate the bulb from the stand of the lamp and change the color of each. Alright, so I've got my shape. If I were to zoom back a bit, you'll notice that your pivot, if you hit W, is down at the bottom where the y-axis meets the x-axis, and that's where we want to see that, right against that inside edge, so that when we do revolve that, we get a shape similar to the one to the left here. So now I'm going to hold down the space bar, and I'm going to go to Surfaces, Revolve, and I'll go to the menu, and I'm going to go to Edit Reset Settings, always a good idea in case you had set it to something prior, you don't recall what the function might be, may not be what you want, uh, and now I'll simply hit Apply. Now, the uh, nice thing about using the apply as opposed to just revolve is that if you were to click on revolve to close the window out, which means you can't uh, command Z undo this and then reapply it. So I pretty much have what I want here. So I'm going to close this out. Now, it looks a little goofy, not quite perfect, not exactly what I want. So I'll move the geometry to the right now and I will go to the Bezier curve I used to evolve this. And now if I right-click on it and I go in and sub-edit this under control vertex, I can now go in and I can adjust these vertices. And you can see now my geometry is editing as well. And that's because of the history. All right, so now um, I've got the uh, shape pretty much what I want here. Uh, so I'll uh, go back to my object mode. And now I'm going to make the lamp shade. So for this, there's a bunch of different ways. But the quickest, easiest way to create this, if you notice, um, this is simply a polygon that I've deleted the top and the bottom faces from. Um, I could have used a nerves cylinder as well. So, uh, but let's use a polygon. So I'll hold down the space bar, and I'll go to create, and I'll go to polygon primitives. And I'll choose cylinder. I'll take my cylinder. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to get on top of it. Now I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to right click and choose face. And I know that if I click and drag in a very broad way on the faces and select the ones on the top, it also has gone in and selected the ones on the bottom. So if I were to go to my perspective view now and hit delete, I'm going to see that that is now hollowed out pretty much the way I would need for my lampshade. So now I'm going to put it into position. So I'll right click, I'll go to object, and I'll select it. I'll return to my orthographic views. I'm going to hit shift A so that I see everything in its entirety, all my geometry and all my windows. And I'll go to one of my orthographic views first. In this case, I'll go to the front, drag it into position like so. At this point, I might start to scale it the way I want. And again, it's pretty subjective at this point. Now I will go to my orthographic side view. 
and that looks pretty good. And uh, just to confirm that, I might hit 4 on the keyboard to go to wireframe so I can see through uh, to my geometry below. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just make sure that in my top view as well, it's over the uh, light bulb stand configuration. I'll hit 4 on the keyboard. There's the base. The bulb is the smaller circles here, and there's my shade. Now all I want to do to make this a little bit more uh, traditional is I'm going to flare it out. Right now it looks kind of modern. So I'll right click, I'll choose Vertex, and I'm going to select the bottom set. I will hit R to get my scale tool. Be careful. I'm going to keep this symmetrical. I'm going to keep that circle perfect, so grab the square in the middle where the other vertices radiate out from, and I'll click with my left mouse and I'll drag that to the right like so. And it gets pretty subjective for the shape you're looking for. Then I'll go back to my object mode, I'll hit Command S to save, and hit continue. Alright, so uh, maybe the proportion's a little bit off here, so what I think I'll do is, since I still have the history attached to this, I'm going to click here, I'm going to make this taller first, so once again, I'll probably play it safe by going to the orthographic view. And I'll right-click and choose Control Vertexes. And I'll start to move these out a bit, just moving them up. There we go. Kind of like that. Maybe I'll center this section again. And I'm being very careful to do this in my orthographic views so that it remains symmetrical in shape. So that is much better. I think I'll move the lampshade up a bit. And if I was going to my perspective view, and I'll give that a quick render by clicking on my IPR. And there we have our lamp.